if you can trust a man that is mundane and can change in a moment i can like you today and hate you tomorrow and if you ask me why i will say it's my choice is that true i can hate you tomorrow and like you the next tomorrow when you put your arm your strength on men it is so unreliable the best of any man can change overnight i can promise to give you more and say i can't remember and just because my memory failed me you will be punished but the bible says this word has been tried seven times listen carefully it's not just a book that makes people spiritual it's more than that this is a compendium of the mind of christ listen carefully the bible is a compendium of the ways of god this is the ancient secret of an unbeatable life the ancient secret behind strange results those who can be foolish enough foolish enough childlike enough brothers and sisters this is the book that turns a poor man into levels of stupendous wealth this is the book that turns a sinner and makes he a man of God out of him. Listen to me. This is the book that turns a man who cannot pay a rent of 10,000 to now own an estate. This is a book that can make a confused young man not knowing what to do with his life to become one who will govern kings and nations. This book has led many. We are not the first to hold it. There are many ancient hands that held this book. They were stupid enough to read everything there. And they believed God they believed him that's the point it's not just reading it they saw it and they believed and God performed wonders in and through their life today we have come in the midst of history we're not starting anything new we just have followed them who through faith and patience when they taught us they taught us to trust the word and so we believe the word listen it may not yet look like everything is appearing but let me tell you the truth your destiny is too small to make the word of god fail for the first time no sir no sir no sir god used this word to humble the pride of wicked kings who were, their confidence were built upon divinations that had been tried for a long time yet the word of god brought them to their knees if i trust any other thing in life and i do not trust the word of god i'm a foolish man praise the lord this is the secret i have a name that i call the bible I don't call it the bible it is my road map to accessing the mysteries of the kingdom i study the bible like an archaeologist like someone who has lost a treasure and is looking for it i keep saying it that the secret to the future is in the past when you can go behind the ancient part is not the part of a nomination the ancient part is a part where you open what did jacob see what did the psalmist see and if the spirit of revelation opens your eyes to see it ah, brothers and sisters you create your own reality and walk in it as if satan does not exist this is what makes those who don't understand these mysteries they think that you know when men of god talk like this they are arrogant your reality is based on what your eyes have seen you must believe this your reality is based on what your eyes have seen it is important for you to understand please let me have your attention it is very important there is nothing that is built by magic there is nothing that is built by gimmicks this is it your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever see spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise i will sing i will sing of the 
wonders of your word I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word And I will forever sing I will sing, I will sing Of the wonders of your word I will sing Now for joy I will sing Of the wonders of your word And I will forever sing Listen if I ask you to stand up now and I tell you what is the basis of your confidence somebody will say my father is coming out for election and some person in presidency promised him that this turn is his turn to eat that is complete nonsense it's human beings that vote somebody in and out and they can change their minds overnight another person will say his brother is the manager of xyz and because he's sitting on money he will bless him hear what the bible says he says for by the arm of flesh did you hear that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail no man prevail you know i have become addicted to this book it's not because i'm a preacher Jesus gave a parable I did not understand for many years. He said, the kingdom is like a man who is looking for a treasure. The treasure is missing and then he lights a candle and goes around the room. The treasure is not the word. The treasure is the result you are looking for. But he tells you how to look for it. You light the candle. You carry an empty candle, you, you keep roaming around. An empty candle is... A Bible you bought from Zondavan and you drop. That's an empty candle. But when the illumination of the Spirit is upon it, you carry it and move around. When you find it, it comes life to you. Then you communicate a dimension of results that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Let me tell you, don't ever doubt a man whose confidence is based on something he has caught in the Word. You will be angry forever. You will dream forever. Now, nah. Anything that is not a derivative of the word, I don't trust it because I don't have control over it. The Bible says he upholds all things. That includes my destiny. He upholds all things by the word of his power. We need to be a confident people. Listen, not just believers, confident people. A depth of conviction and persuasion that is brought about by this. The illumination of the spirit upon this word so you search for it crime in scriptures is not just it's not the key to understand the word that's not just how it works many of us have memory of scripture which is not bad in itself except for the fact that it has no ability to empower you just like that it's like carrying granite seed and chucking it in your pocket do you have a harvest will it grow sir <clears throat> The word is the seed. That's what Jesus said. The soil is your heart. The rain is the Holy Spirit. You can plant a seed and dry season will kill it into nothing. The seed is not wrong, but the anointing. You see that? The rain that comes upon the seed. Brothers and sisters, please, I want you to pay attention. For every time God gives us the privilege to converge like this, it is not the advancement of a man's agenda. It is the progression of your accessing the mysteries that will cause you to command dominion. Let me tell you something. There is a dimension of light that we are going to project to the world that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Yes. A dimension of light. Young people will rise up with a level of strange prosperity that people will say, no, no, no. Are these guys scammers? Are they fraudsters? We say, no, we found an ancient secret that can allow men to be blessed and focus on their assignment. You see that? 
you will rise with a strange level of the anointing that will make even her ballast to wonder and say i may have ballast but this is strange it will happen i am an archaeologist i search it i don't read the bible to finish it i read the bible to find <laughs> what i'm looking for and sometimes you can find one verse and stay there that's where the goal is so if you are all you are doing is just to finish i read psalms 5 today you came close to the gold mine and carelessness took you away and you go somewhere it is scripture but it's not the word of god the word of god is that part of scripture that gives you life <laughs> so many people brag religiously i started studying the bible by january and now i'm in revelations 22 call the person and say how many treasures did you find even one one the only thing they find is an accolade that i search the scripture but someone will come with an honest heart and open one scripture you heard what that gentleman said he used the way the truth the life alone imagine what else we can find I've shared with you my vision years ago when I was caught up in the spirit and I saw a big gate and that gate was made of small, small doors. You know, they were opening and closing and light was emitting from every one of them. And then I kept looking and I noticed it was zoomed to me and I saw scripture written on every door. And the doors were opening and closing and I was asking the Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord said, every time you catch a revelation, the light component that is the performer of that revelation anything you claim you have caught and you cannot bring it to the scene is a lie you have not gotten it yet please pray and say lord by your mercy open my eyes today this kind of prayer you must add the mercy of god in it because what else will you say by what lord i cry by your mercy Open my eyes to see. You have spoken great things, but until my eyes see it, there is no possession. It says, as far as your eyes can see. Are we praying? Open my eyes. Show me where the anointing for the next level is. Open my eyes. Show me where the key to my lifting is. Open my eyes. Show me where the river is in the desert. Open my eyes. Oh God, many people will be hearing many things, but show me my own. And the word of the Lord came. And the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord has always been around. The word of the Lord came. Let my word come. The word of the Lord came. Hallelujah. Listen, let me teach you something about the mercy of God. Every time you want to access the spirit of revelation, ask the Lord to release it by his mercy. There is no known formula I know for receiving the spirit of revelation. It is by the mercy and the grace of God that the eyes of a man be open. In scripture, the eyes of a man was open when he said, Thou son of David, have. He didn't say, Thou son of David, don't pass me by. He would have remained there crying till Jesus. That was the last time Jesus would pass Jericho. But I saw a relationship between the mercy of God and the spirit of revelation. Is thou son of David, will I remain blind like this forever? Have. He never said, I want to walk. The walking is a subset of the mercy. When illumination come, or I want to see, I want, mm -mm. thou son of David, have mercy. It's a language God cannot pass by. No matter what you know to do at once, God hears mercy. He remembers the blood. And it turns, what should I do for you? 
You didn't call me correctly. Oh, I hope you know. Yes, that's why I said mercy. I don't even know your name. I said son of David. Whether you are carpenter or Jesus, I added mercy to my confusion. Have mercy on me. That's how you can see someone who will be bragging around. I went to theological school and teaching nonsense and jargons. And someone will sit down and say, Lord, I came from the village. There was no light in our community. But Lord, I know that I've been seeing myself in dreams, ministering and raising the, the dead and watches. Can you open my eyes by your mercy and the spirit of revelation comes? Boom. One scripture. He may not be able to quote everything. One scripture. And with that scripture, you will do exploits. I'd like you to prepare your spirit. Because what I want to share with you tonight will bless you in no small way. People come to the house of God for many years, Jimmy. And you find out that they are not growing. How do you grow? There are two indices for growth. It's no confusion. Number one is the degree to which you are conforming experientially to the image of Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. If you are not understanding the precepts of the kingdom, you are not growing, sir. Whether they ordain you pastor, apostle, deacon, once you are not accessing the mystery of the kingdom, you are not growing. It's as simple as that. Because that's how we reign in this kingdom. On the strength of mysteries. What do you know now that took away fear from you? The fear you had in January. What entered you that can give you confidence to look at it and say, no way, not again. If your fear of January is still your fear of today, you made the word of God unfruitful in your life. Someone entered this year wondering, and right now the person is just laughing at the same situation. I say, Satan, no, no, no. That one, that was, that was last year's challenge. You won't talk that nonsense with me again. Because you know what to do. Not bold face for nothing. For Jesus himself knew what to do. My assignment in this ministry is that by the privilege of God's election and grace, I will continue to show you what to do. The result you desire versus the mystery that connects it. That's my assignment. To continue to show you that the kingdom is a compendium of possibilities. But accessing them are predicated upon your knowledge of the mystery allocated for that result. Not the mystery available. The mystery that is allocated. You want to be blessed. Anything in the Bible will not bless you anyway. You have to find the one that is allocated for you. You don't put rice in a pot and when it boils, you lift it up and see beans. You will see food, but not beans. If it's beans you want to cook, you better find out one, where to get beans, two, how to cook it, correct? So anything in the kingdom is not what you are looking for. There are people who are blessed financially, but this sickness will kill you. You go to the hospital and treat it to refuse to come. Brothers and sisters, there is an allocation. You have to find us. There are pastors who are so anointed. They can raise the dead. But you, they will never have up to 30 members. There is a mystery that keeps men. People are not stupid to just come and sit down. Sit outside. Endure all kinds of things. No sir. My assignment. Is that by the agency of the spirit. That I communicate to you the mysteries. When you gather them together like this, it's like a chain that connects you and heaven. When you move in life, the moment a challenge comes, you smile because you understand the key to address it. Fear and ignorance and pain is a revelation of your bankruptcy of the understanding of the mystery that is tied to a result you are looking for. There are things I used to fear years ago. I don't fear them again. I didn't cast out the spirit of fear understanding took me out of that realm you see that yes so please i want us to focus when you see us cry for the spirit of understanding this thing is not just uh, even this anointing because you see many people especially ministers this is what we are all looking for anointing anointing is not just a generic oil that comes on your head this anointing you see has dynamics it doesn't just work anyhow 
how many people are you going to lay hands on on your life won't it kill you there is a system there are many means of transportation there is bicycle there is jet if you want to arrive lagos with a bicycle you may die before you arrive there that's how the dispensing of the anointing is you will meet people there are it, knowing the vehicle is not just enough you must understand the system of helping it reach people there's somebody seated outside another overflow there's somebody online in another nation how do you if all you know is just to lay hands on people how do you bless those who are far Please pray before I start teaching in one minute and say, Lord, change my level. Insist, please pray. Change my level. Paul said, I went up by revelation. Show me something. Lord, where I am is a revelation of my limited knowledge. I take responsibility and I admit, open my eyes. Satan can't be that powerful. There's something I am not seeing. Lord, I've been falling under the anointing, but that anointing has not healed one sick body. There is something I'm not getting. I have been sowing seeds, but a harvest has not been coming. What is blocking it? What more do I need to know? hallelujah please sit down <laughs> mm. the bible says when you read ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened paul is teaching here and then he says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them ignorance alienates a man from the life of god the experience of that zoe life are we together now that their understanding is darkened that's the issue then it says that as a result of that darkened understanding they are being alienated from the experience of the kingdom so they may have semblance of what should be but never enter into the experience of it most people are not in ignorance of what their life should be they know what they should become but the power to make it happen that is a derivative of light you know you should be more anointed than now you know you should be more prosperous but what is the limitation it says having their understanding darkened and then alienated from the life of god on the strength of the ignorance that is in them I came angry in my spirit oh we'll be we'll pray i trust god for grace so that we'll finish fast and just have some few minutes to pray first peter 5 10 just one scripture there is a level of rest i began to perceive in my spirit that many of us were ordained by god to enter this year that we have not entered and my assignment is to insist that these two months left we must force something to happen the bible says but the god of all grace listen who had called us into eternal glory by jesus christ after you have suffered the word suffered there is endured endured with certain things a while what will he do make you perfect uh-huh establish you uh-huh strengthen you uh-huh set to you give you stability these four things must happen to someone's life between this november and december listen i really want you to believe me because believers are the ones who are possessors are we together it says after you have and you have put up with certain things for a while put up with poverty for a while put up with pain for a while put up with disappointment listen it can't be forever no sir 
a book has many pages when you stay on one page forever it's a course after you have suffered a while the bible says weeping and just for a night if you cry to the next morning cry in the afternoon cry till another night that crying has violated god's ordinances he allows people to only weep in the night after you have suffered for a while make you perfect establish you establish you then he says strengthen you all kinds of might financial might intellectual might then he says settle you settle you you are unmovable you have gotten to a level where you are not afraid uh -uh. the lord declared that this is a year of triumph i believe this so when god gave me this scripture it entered my spirit and the lord began to communicate to me and say son you have not hit my expectation for the year this triumph there is there is something there is there is a dimension of testimony that is not yet rampant here and there like rain people are getting it but it is in a ministry of thousands of people if only four people testify as a man of god not failed four over thousands is zero round it up is zero so there is a dimension the services that remain for this year will be very strangely prophetic services i tell you there are services meant at pushing people to force the reality of this world because brothers and sisters god cannot lie god cannot lie god cannot lie god cannot lie so the lord showed me this scripture and it really really blessed me tonight i'm going to teach very briefly on the mystery of divine intervention the mystery of divine intervention what is the spiritual secret behind calling god in the time of trouble and let him show up and bail you out what is the system in the kingdom that has been built where men when you need the help of god when your life is faced with an emergency and you need to call heaven brothers and sisters there are emergencies in our lives that require access to this system the mystery of divine intervention the bible is full of near near shame experiences where god got up showed up for individuals showed up for the nation of israel god turned the lives of people around overnight let me show you one scripture you will want to know second peter chapter 2 verse 9 learn this scripture add it to your spiritual arsenals you will need it i guarantee you second peter chapter 2 verse 9 i want us to run uh, tonight read it with me please one two read the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly from temptation or oppression or calamities and to reserve the unjust unto the day the lord knows how to exchange experiences that he looks as child and says for my name's sake come promise that he looks at this person who calls upon his name and watches that this guy is getting into trouble he says god knows how to exchange people and carry this person out and drop the wicked for the punishment that is allocated for the righteous is called intervention there is a system in god listen please there is a system in god where god can plug men out of the fire remember the story of the three hebrew boys the bible says they found the furnace seven times that those who threw them inside the furnace listen they threw them inside the furnace and the heat killed them and when four of them were inside the king was not a believer but the king had had strange encounters and he saw a face in that fire he had seen in his dream he said i i look and i see four people and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of god and the bible says they came out they could not even smell fire what of daniel that was thrown in the den of the lions because of his prayer life the bible says the lions were at peace with him 
and when he came out and they threw those other fellows the lions just devoured them brothers and sisters there is a mystery there is a hidden code of operation allocated to the saints in light to help them deliver them out of all the troubles and the vicissitudes that satan puts because you see your destiny is a function of many things and sadly it includes the lives of others and that also includes their carelessness there are times you will get into things you necessarily did not cause but you will suffer the consequence if you don't know how to exempt yourself this is like an extension of the mystery of exemption the mystery of divine intervention where men called upon god and god showed up and turned the lives of nations around turned the lives of individuals around there is a way you call upon god for your personal prayer life but brothers and sisters there is a way you call upon god to intervene on a matter that if he does not intervene sometimes it may be that you are finished There was a time death was killing people in israel killing people there was a way they called on god divine intervention is real all through scripture we see that god is able to arise psalms 102 verse 13 it says thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time in god's calendar there is a time more there is a time to favor joshua selman there is a time to lift me and you see the bible says in amos chapter 3 verse 9 that god does not do anything but to reveal his secret to his servants the prophets so when god is about to do something in a territory he captures his thoughts in words in in similitudes in in all kinds of expressions communicates it to his servants to deliver to the people so that their faith will be connected to what he wants to do in the season and God has declared that it's a season of triumph I believe God it's not just a cliche that a man of God comes to move ministry forward no sir thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time the time to favor her the time to lift her the time to honor her for God's sake, the time to wipe her tears, the time for Zion to say, I am also the bride of a good man. He says, the time has come. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Many people want intervention. Intervention is the supernatural is a supernatural visitation over a man's situation that brings a radical transformation supernatural visitation of god supernatural visitation of god all of a sudden god steps in overnight and changes a man's situation overnight he says have you heard this proverb that a city was born in one day he said but as soon as zion travails in one day she shall put forth a son why do we need divine intervention because of our imperfection as human beings the first reason that necessitates divine intervention is that we are inaccurate as human beings our inaccuracy as human beings inaccuracy of understanding and obeying the precepts of god will necessitate god to create that provision are we together if a young man drinks and smokes and gets to a point where he now repents when his liver is quarter to die he has repented but the liver is still going to kill him that gentleman doesn't just need a healing he needs a divine intervention when somebody repents in the prison and is supposed to say 80 years and he went there at 40 you see that he's going to die in the prison he needs divine intervention he's born again but he's in the prison our families are in desperate need for divine intervention is that true Hmm. father not working mother not working 
13 children, 10 of them not working. All of them graduates. Haba. There is need for a strange intervention. How about human agents that will sit on your destiny and vow and say for as long as we are here, we fraternize with darkness to jeopardize your confidence about God. I wish there was no such reality. But brothers and sisters, the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the wickedness that lies in our world. I was talking with a young man on phone who sent me a text. I think they worship one kind of idol and the father has been calling him. I should come back. There's something he's supposed to do. The guy said he's not coming back. After graduating from school, they're asking you to come. They will bath you, put something on your head like a cap and one kind of ritual like this. After that, they'll say you can go. The guy said he's not coming. And the man told him that that thing, whatever it is, will pursue him and look for him with his blood father the boy was speaking to me and i said let me tell you my brother if you go there and carry yourself and go and sit down under that whatever it is and they bath you with the blood of an animal and do those rituals uh -uh. god is able rather than wasting your time paying transport use the money and buy a book that reveals a mystery that you do keep the enemy at bay because what that shrine is trying to prevent him from will look for him if he doesn't have the mystery allocated he can make bold face and say i won't go but you will soon find out that it will happen to him first child dull second child very dull third child very dull and the person says, i'm brilliant my wife is brilliant and he sees that thing in a dream he say i i told you 10 years ago you would have rescued your children see don't reject darkness without having the light component don't just say i reject darkness eh, every shine in my village god forbid it's a joke you must have the light component otherwise i tell you to haunt you and tear you into pieces there are forces of darkness we need divine intervention because of our inaccuracy we need divine intervention because listen the pace at which darkness attempts to destroy us versus our level of spiritual growth will require divine intervention at some point now look at me listen let me tell you something in the next 10 years there are things that i will know then that i don't know now but satan is plotting all kinds of schemes over my life based on the knowledge i need to know 10 years to come I need intervention by the mercy of God to give me victory before I enter that level of understanding. If my victory is purely left to my level of understanding alone, it means that I will be punished on many grounds before I come into that knowledge. You need divine intervention. Is God speaking to someone here? Let me tell you this. I am very outspoken about results. I'm not a man of God that will lie to you and say results don't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If results don't matter, why do you go to work? Why do you wait for salary at the end of the month? Is that true? Results matter to God, matter to the devil, matter to everybody on earth. Whether we agree or not. Results are consolations to your Christian experience. Whilst it is true that we do not serve God just for results. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Even Jesus saw a fig tree that was receiving nourishment from the principle he programmed in the earth and was not yielding the result he caused it in annoyance so god wants us to bear fruit but there are keys that we must understand please look up there are many of us here and there are many of our family members here had they known that there is a mystery that controls divine intervention many tragedies we now weep over would not have happened listen carefully are we together now yes somebody looked at you and vowed and said pastor alpha i will destroy you we said no problem you wouldn't destroy me but you did not understand the component the revelation component and eventually it caught up with you i prayed for a lady she probably may be following now online married loved her husband 
all of a sudden the husband just changed and became a, a very very funny man doesn't even stay in the same room with her and all of that and she she could not take it again and she called me you know i prayed with that lady and just this morning she sent me a text she said she woke up in the morning and just saw her husband sitting by her bed something brought him listen listen this is what I, you see men are slaves to the mysteries that control them you can program things like a bomb in the spirit and just go and watch it the same way i can put a bomb and i program blow by eight o'clock and then i just move somewhere and i'm laughing at everybody around here because it must blow except another agency superimposes it this is how you can program results in the realm of the spirit and watch like a movie as they unfold in the earth realm using things you call circumstances coincidences but you know that they are intentional results that were programmed by mysteries this is how i want your life to be that you can sit down and program growth program speed program breakthrough and watch everything like a movie and day after day you watch someone get up and say sorry elijah I, I i hope this is a new keyboard i bought for you and you laugh something was programmed your house that has been 10 years refused to be completed you program something by understanding and someone comes to say ah, sam i don't know do you mind me complete this house and you will say yes because it was intentionally done you don't say i'm surprised you are coming i'm not surprised you were called are we together that's why when people die in the villages the habalists don't cry have you ever seen them crying no something they programmed they program somebody from london and tell him where to come and die when he dies other people are crying and the guy says well it's just to let you know that we are not children you can program things from the foundations of the earth some things were programmed and the intelligence of the father he watched everything unfold through redemption no power could stop it satan tried he entered he went when jesus was fasting now came and entered peter now came and entered when he entered judas i'm sure satan thought he was smart paul was watching it like a movie and saying yeah yeah had they known this so this was the caricature that god was making out of satan he thought he was smart but he was god was using him as a slave because you see when you kill a man according to scripture his blood will haunt you so god made sure it was satan that killed jesus yeah go and read your bible blood is a mystery it remains on the head of the killer forever paul was watching this whether he was in a hole in a cave in prison i don't know but paul was saying ah, ah. satan couldn't you see jesus casted you out of peter and left you in judas you didn't ask why you just continued until you became a fool that's the reason why when we invoke the blood something really happens it happens to whoever was the killer when cain killed abel blood cried against him cried against him <laughs> i need divine intervention you need divine intervention samaria needed divine intervention please sit down they got to a point scripture says come that they got to a point where women can you imagine brothers and sisters that you get to a point where you are not just eating goats you are not just eating clothes women you have your child i'm telling you there is a strange grace this year for fruitfulness and miracles in this ministry we have seen very dramatic manifestations and and all of that there are mothers all around with their children moving right and center now imagine Pastor Alphas, that little baby. Imagine Annie holding this her child and saying, look, there is so much poverty. Pastor Alpha travels somewhere to go and look for food. And she liasses with her Jimmy's wife. Two of them, they carry Jael and carry David. And two of them stand and agree. And they say, we are eating Jael this night. You eat it. What sort of hunger makes you eat a whole human being? Now watch this. 
Then the Bible says they ate the first one. Then the next day, it was the turn to eat the other one. And the mother said no. And the woman said no. You ate my child. Listen, while that confusion was happening, the king started passing. And they went. They said, king, you can't leave us like this. And when all of that happened, the king said, look for Elisha for me. Look for Elisha for me. Because he had that Elijah program famine. He said, I'm sure Elisha has a hand in this trouble. Go and look for this. This, this guy was mentored by the troublemaker of Israel. Go and look for Elisha. Watch this. While all of this suffering was happening, the Bible says Elisha and the sons of the prophet were, he didn't say they were hungry. When he saw the king coming, he said, this son of a murderer wants to now come and kill me. Oh, yeah, you push, you stop him. And because of that, it's okay now. He's called my attention. Let me casually do something about what is killing a nation. By this time, Kabakoto Sakataya. By this time, tomorrow. By this time, tomorrow. Listen. He didn't tell you how it will happen. If you understand the superiority of the realm of the spirit, you will never ask how results manifest. You see, let me tell you something. When people argue and say, how did this thing happen? They are not wise. The raw materials that create the earth are resident within the realm of the spirit. He said, by this time tomorrow, by this time, I'm hurrying up. I would have given you scriptures, but I really want us to pray. That by this time tomorrow, they call, hey, please help them. This will cause this and that. And then a foolish man, like many doubters that insult men of God, he said, what are you saying? I mean, I'm the minister of this and that. I read this and that. Even if the windows, AJ, he knew that much that heaven had a window. With what did they build the window? He never asked. If God will open the window, will these things be? And the prophet said me, you will see it all. But they will kill you in front of that breakthrough. Then look at how the miracle happened. The prophecy had been programmed in the spirit. Now it is up to the word. This is where the wisdom of God starts. He starts searching for scenarios in the earth that can bring what is in the spirit to manifest are you seeing how prophecy comes to pass watch this look at this let me teach you something watch this look at me and learn if i prophesy to you a mecca and say by tomorrow if it is really by the spirit i say by tomorrow money is coming to your account i have placed that word in the spirit hold on the word manifests by the wisdom of the spirit let me tell you what the wisdom of the spirit is it will start searching the earth to look for the scenario on earth that is capable of bringing that word down then connect it to the individual listen the wisdom of god will move to a rich man if it's not open it will move to somebody who god had instructed to so if it will keep moving like that that's how the anointing got to mary to be the mother of jesus the bible never said the name of the mother of jesus will be mary the prophecy started searching for a virgin when he found one and she said i'm available he brought her out listen there are too many activities on earth that can mirror what is happening in the heavens for God to be bankrupt in terms of manifestation. When God says, I want to bless you, he's already speaking to millions of people to sow. It's just that he has not told them who to sow. The wisdom of God can just connect one of them. You see how prophecy works. I'm helping your faith so that when God says, I will do this, you now sit with your limited mind and say, I only know Uncle A and B. And I already know A promise you will never see me. And God is saying, no, we are talking about the wisdom of the creator. Look at what happened. Four lepers. Everybody say four lepers. Four lepers were sitting quietly. And the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom. Because the word of God must come to pass. The man of God had declared it. And the, the anointing came on the lepers. They thought they were just tired. But they didn't know that at that point, they were under the influence of a man of God. And 
the world started programming that result they say why sit here till we die even that talk was by the spirit they thought they were gisting and they said look let's just get up and go to the camp of our enemies and tell them kill us but let's eat first the bible says the moment they began to go god changed their people they began to hear the sounds of chariots and all of them, listen were they not warriors is it not fight they fought to get those things couldn't they fight again when god wants to bless you he will move your enemy in a way that you will not even know how things happen i know i should not graduate but there is a mystery that can be programmed a man is watching your result 37 over 50 you need 50 something comes on him and he right and he does not even know listen listen people some people hear the testimony of some of our some of the people who wrote jam here that jam changes from 100 and something to two and you hear them talking nonsense talking stupid things and saying how can it happen and i said look, look at this foolishness how does a boil come out of your stomach where did the mass accumulate from that projected out did any part of your body reduce for it to come out did he ask where it came from then when it disappears you say where did it go to you see how we think son of man can these bones live again immediately oh not after 10 years not gradually can these bones live again he said god i've seen many miracles but i've not seen this type that a dry bone is not like a dead human being i believe in raising the dead but dry bones and he said okay i want to show you something that when i show up i compress time and make things happen and he said prophesy prophesy and things began to shift listen it is too late when mysteries have been programmed in the spirit take it from me the moment a man programs something in the spirit you better find a way of countering it in the spirit otherwise it must manifest <laughs> this is what herbalists do they conjure things they conjure spirit and then they tell the person go it is done at the point they said go it is done you didn't feel anything oh go we shall be we put your husband in a bottle and you saw it go it is done the woman will go home and still see her arrogant husband come back and she'll be laughing you're already in a bottle two days later physical things start happening in the earth to force him to confirm to what has been programmed after one week the man becomes a toy to her because the realm of the spirit must so you look at a woman who is barren it may look like you just touched her stomach but it's more than that mysteries were programmed in the spirit but he said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man he says the power of the highest brothers and sisters i came to prophesy to someone it will be a quick walk oh it will be a quick walk it will be a quick walk i tell you except it's not the god i told you that the remaining services don't miss them they will be help them please they will be strongly prophetic services strongly prophetic services it will be a quick walk there is a mystery that can push men false prophecy push men it is possible that in one day something can happen to you and you will turn and say god i'm sorry for doubting you when it was time for the animals to enter the ark of noah he didn't call one of them something was manipulated in the spirit all the animals started lining up regardless of their hostilities they lined up and came quietly listen let me tell you something the day i learned the vanity of the physical realm compared to the spiritual realm i stopped wasting my time about physical things Tr trust me i really mean it i saw how helpless the physical realm is that a body without a spirit is dead i stopped wasting my time those who do business do it in the spirit realm 
they program things in the spirit realm and just watch like strangers how things manifest you program favor and you come and see strangers bringing blessings and people say how is it happening you see what is happening in this ministry submit to you it was programmed it's not a coincidence something took you from where you were and brought you here it's not just that you like a man no it's a mystery that is the same thing that will put a baby in the barren womb it's not when a man meets his wife that she gets pregnant to a man meets his wife to give the child physical form Do you believe what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. One of the things we are going to do tonight is to change some things. There are results that are wrong. Something programmed it. It may be our ignorance. It may be something. I bring you a message of hope. The realm of the spirit is still there. That means there is still an ability to access it. Please sit down. I'm just trying to compose myself. My spirit is boiling this night. Listen listen i have experimented this thing too many times too many times too many times you can program favor you can program breakthrough listen you can program judgment on the wicked you can program speed the word of god is an instrument of creation you can create realities that were not there when you hear people testify it's not like the testimony was waiting somewhere a word created it when you are programming mysteries you don't attach a face to it the wisdom of god will create the actors of that mystery in the physical realm you don't say god bless me through my uncle uh -uh. I have accessed the principles that brings the blessing it is god that will start sourcing for the men that will act the movie that will bring your breakthrough he can use a donkey he can use stone it doesn't matter the most important thing is that let it come are we together i tell you Believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you there are more angels on this ground than people sitting. There are more angels, angelic presence. I don't know if it's because of what I'm teaching tonight, but I prayed for strange intervention, angelic interventions. And the Lord is just opening my eyes and I'm seeing that there are numerous angels, battalions of angels every time god opens do you know why when i speak like this people start manifesting under the anointing because you see when you are open to the realm of the spirit portal is created immediately do you understand and when that portal is created there must be an effect remember when paul saul now saw jesus those there did not see but there was an effect from the realm of the spirit i'm explaining it because it's nothing strange but i stand and i see angels inside outside like this i'm even on that fence you are seeing i'm seeing all kinds of things happening and this is by the power of the spirit i believe that not all the angels are the same they are according to their ranking and their functions according to what kind of intervention must manifest because see our challenges are not the same i know some of you may not have issues but let me tell you there are people the issues you have require recovery restoration judgment on somebody so there are angels that are allocated for that kind of thing was it not an angel that used hailstone and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight please help them
Mande Katus, I release angels, strange ministry of intervention, Brakoto Soto Ketabarata, Zegetekata, by the authority of the Most High, angelic interventions over lives and families it must end tonight in the name of jesus is the year of triumph it must end tonight thou shall arise thou shall arise thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion thou shall arise God is arising over a family God is arising over a family Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You see, Ba, when you come before God's presence, the Bible tells us that upon Mount Zion many things happen. The innumerable company of angels. These things are not fables. The Bible is not a book for religious people. It is life. It is true. It is our own belief that has made it look like a storybook. That you come to his presence and there is a strange intervention. I say it again in the name of Jesus. As I begin to teach, I've not finished. But in Jesus name, I release the ministry of angels. I release the ministry of angels that whilst the teaching is going on let intervention start in the name of Jesus Christ strange interventions strange interventions please sit down if you can please help those outside very quickly I will give us four keys let's use 10 minutes sorry I will not be explaining it in depth I want us to pray I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I feel the spirit of prayer here. There are four keys to provoking divine intervention. Every time you are in a situation where you need the help of heaven urgently, do these four things and you will change the tides in a way that will surprise you. Listen, brothers and sisters, as you learn these mysteries, please use them. Don't be too big to use them. Be childlike and apply them. You will be surprised. These are not cunningly divine fables. These are things that I do myself. They are not necessarily things I'm just telling you just for, for, you know, just the sake of it. The first thing to do when you are in need of strange intervention is engage in the ministry of prayer. Number one, please quickly, prayer. I'll give you two scriptures and then we'll, we'll be able to look at two. Write it down, please. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 talks about Peter. Don't, don't project it. I just want to hurry up. In Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11, the Bible tells us how that James was caught by Herod. He was beheaded. And when it pleased the Jews, he now caught Peter and locked him. And then the Bible says the brethren began to pray whilst they began to pray an angel came into the prison brought peter out peter even thought he was having a vision until he took him out and then peter was free we see that prayer was part of the instruments that were used was used to bring strange and divine intervention acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 please write this down acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 it's a long reading don't project it just write it down acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 this was um a scenario where paul 
casted out the demon from the lady that was using divination to prophesy and then the people got angry and they mobbed them you know and then the bible says that they chained them and they were kept under the custody of a jailer then the bible says paul and silas prayed and they sang and the bible says everyone in the prison had them all of a sudden there was an earthquake and then the bible says the things broke and all doors open i like that all doors it didn't say some doors when the chain broke all doors the doors of the prison of other people connected to them also open all doors open prayer can open doors james chapter 5 verse 13 maybe you can project that he said is any of you afflicted let him pray prayer is the re biblical recommendation for affliction if any of you afflicted he said let him pray so whenever you are afflicted the key is to pray you may not know what to do i'm teaching you what to do now but regardless of what the situation is pray especially engaging in the spirit the most the most sound way to engage warfare prayers especially is to pray in the spirit first as you pray in the spirit the holy spirit begins to construct the scriptures in your mind you will not utter them just as words you will utter them as prophecies that's what we leave to bring the result so the first key is not just to start talking uh, you take out time and pray in the spirit that's why it is important to be filled with the holy ghost with a clear evidence of praying in tongues it's not a phenomenon for pentecostals there is a dimension of victory you will never be able to command are we blessed is any among you afflicted has any of you received a bad report has any of you been told that you have so 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 time to live has any strange spirit appeared to anybody and said you will not see christmas so when others are rejoicing don't join them the key is not to get up and cry has any stranger come to you while you sleep and try to molest you and you just got up and said this thing has come again no sir has the door of fear closed towards you so the people who used to help you suddenly have changed the people who used to like you suddenly have changed the doors that used to bring you blessings have changed something is suddenly happening to your spiritual life prayer zero word life zero you need an intervention prayer the scripture i want us to read now is psalms 18 never forget this scripture It's one of the arsenals that i have for my personal um it's a scripture that has blessed me i have prayed this scripture if if this scripture was a shook by now i would have maybe the soul would have eaten into pieces i'm giving you a piece of my secret place psalm 18 don't ever forget that scripture don't ever forget it for as long as you live if you are a leader going far this is a chief tool that you need we are going to read from verse 1 to 6 then i'll pick for you the verses we are reading it's a long verse ready please give it to us 1 to 6 i will love thee O lord my strength the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer listen my god my strength in whom i will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower i will call upon the lord i will do what call upon the lord in prayer who is worthy to be praised so by calling upon him shall i be saved from my enemies verse 4 the sorrows of death compass me this is a man in trouble and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid the sorrows of hell compass me about the snares of death prevented me in my distress hallelujah i didn't discuss it with people who cannot help me i called upon the lord and cried upon unto my god he heard my voice from out of his temple and my cry came before him even to where even to his ears there is a kind of cry that enters the ears of the mighty god let's jump to verse 14 then to 17 then 40 to 45 it's a quick reading verse 14 yeah he sent out his arrows god has arrows so hey look up i learned this 
I was checking arrows. You know, arrows that fly by day. And then I found out that it's not only the devil. God, the Bible says, yeah, this is him intervening for me. These are part of the forces from his cabinet of judgment that he can release. He says he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out light things and discomfited them. 17. Please give us 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me. Verse 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried but there was none to save them even unto the lord but he answered them not 42 we're really reading to 48 then did i beat them small as the dust before the wind and did cast them out of the dirt in their streets 43 oh dear media Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people, and thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Pastor, you need this for your ministry. Oh. When you open a branch in a locality that you don't know, there are people who need to come and as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. 45 verse 45 the stranger shall shake, fade away and be afraid out of their close places now 47 to 48 is a scripture i don't want you to ever forget ready go ahead give us well go to 47 go to 47 it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me who did it who did it he says it is God that avenged me and subdued the people under me. 48. He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Divine intervention. As a man of God, there are wicked forces day and night to destroy you. As a leader, there are wicked forces. But when you catch this and catch the revelation, you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And the Lord will be with you mysteriously. You will not travel and sit down and be shaking. Will a car jam me? Will it break my leg? Will it break my head? No, sir. Rest and quietness. On the strength of scripture everybody say prayer we need to learn how to call upon the lord listen do you know most people don't know how to call upon the lord they know how to lament hey oh you are not calling upon the lord you are shouting a lamentation a, a strategy for lamentation that you inherited he said unto thee oh lord do i lift up my soul oh my god let me not be ashamed though let not my enemies triumph over me there is a way you can pray with god sometimes like anna you can't even shout it's not something you you just lie down and say oh god oh god deliver me from the shame of the wicked there are enemies that are waiting to see you fail so that it will be their prophecy fulfilled lord confound their their counsel and god will say it got to my ear i had it i'm on my way coming number two the second key when you want to activate the mystery of divine intervention is to engage praise with understanding praise 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 as an instrument of warfare and praise as an instrument of faith Praise as an instrument of warfare, but that you are blessing him in advance. Listen, this revelation is fast becoming a national anthem in the body of Christ. People are suddenly coming to the realization that praise can work wonders. You know, 
People don't know why the presence of God is still mighty in Africa. It's because Africa is a prison continent. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They laugh at us and think that when we are dancing is nonsense. Praise is a mystery. You want to turn around your situation? No matter what you do, if you have not praised, there is no Lord. Believe me. Lord, give us understanding. Psalm 22 verse 3. It says, Thou art holy, thou that inhabitest the praise of Zion. God makes the praise of men his habitation. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Joshua Selman. Listen, I've taught us how to praise. You don't praise God without dancing. That, that is nonsense. You are, you are singing a national anthem. It's when you are reciting national anthem that you stand and put your hand on your chest. Moving your body is not a sign of, it's not, you are not, you have problems. You can cry but still praise. Are we together? It's, this is a, it's a powerful mystery I want you to learn. Our father bishop david Oedeko, when he almost had a few weeks ago he almost had a plane crash that would have taken his life as soon as that happened they declared praise i said oh dear spiritual intelligence let me tell you what other people would have done they would have organized a cocktail party and said you know we and the devil said that i'm coming back praise praise is one of the most powerful ways to disgrace the devil because you see let me tell you one of depression is the absence of laughter and joy satan uses it when people are about to die there are few people who die smiling most people are depressed then they keep quiet he says that the joy of the lord shall be your strength so when there is no joy your spirit becomes broken and the bible says a broken spirit dry yet the bones You don't praise God when things are going well. You praise God to make them go well. Listen, you don't praise God when, when things are going well and you praise God. It's called thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the dance you give and the testimony you give when things have manifested. But before they manifested, it's called perfected praise. Praise with understanding. Lord, you are so good you are worthy of all my praise lord you are so good you are exalted as the lord most high hold on listen let me tell you what satan will tell you the moment you sing that he will tell you is it not your sister that just died is it not five carryovers we are seeing oh god did they not just sack you the gentleman that has been promising to marry you is he not by 8 a.m. this morning he says not doing again the devil brings it because he knows you see satan knows that we function in the realm of the flesh the senses are we together now so he brings things that resonate with your senses when you see them you are now depressed but that's the time anytime you are praising god satan says why are you praising him he said, no reason i'm praising him to create my testimony you see that listen corporate dancing and praising is good but you must learn to do this thing alone if it means you trusting god to get one small room for yourself for the purpose of praise is what it all is what it reserve the forty thousand for shoes and use it to pay for a small room Put worship wake up in the night because there is personally me i don't have time to do that dance and praise in the afternoon all kinds of calls distracting in the night oh dear oh dear ask god what i do in the night yes yes sometimes i carry koinonia documents drop it on the ground dance before it and shame the devil I carry my phone put it there I'm not dancing before them i say lord you are great i dance before you people are coming from everywhere rain or no rain
publicity or no publicity and god says you are doing this for me i said lord who else will i do it for and you are celebrating him lord you are faithful and you are worshiping him you are sweating like a fool and while you are doing that god is dispatching angels okay make sure you wake that guy to transfer money to his account that hundred thousand i gave you i didn't tell you who to send it to send it to him oh his mother is at home for giving birth to him send an angel there too and my innocent mother is lying down she'll wake up in the morning and say mama where are you say who are you say just come take my praise this our big manism has cheated us beyond imagination this pride that you don't have results and you are still talking you know ah, I, how can, okay i agree that you can't you think i can dance look at me you think no 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 god i don't have that gift of dancing it's not a competition this is your destiny this is breakthrough if a thief puts a gun and says you should dance won't you do something some of us when we were in the world you know the kind of dance demonic satanic dance that you did for the devil for free that destroyed you you got drunk dancing it a spirit entered you dancing it i'm not saying you should dance all kinds of nonsense dance in the house of god but i'm saying that there are times you need to learn to sing and dance alone with listen listen most people dance you can turn your dancing time to a nightclub and god will look at you and say you are wasting your time it is the revelation that makes the singing and the dancing profitable don't just move your body around just because you are happy that, that's that's entertainment brothers and sisters there is the kind of dance that you dance with tears in your eyes but you are doing it with understanding don't think you will only always be laughing are you hearing what i'm saying yes no job for you no job for your wife no job for your five children they are all graduates you have prayed oh nothing happened brothers and sisters try singing and celebrating god everyone in their room rejoicing jesus you are full and you are just dancing let me tell you what will happen the lord will start bringing testimonies remember when a cow would have killed you in 1995 and you say lord i remember oh, and you start dancing it you are you are compressing doubt because something is about to be created you would dance and dance till you fall under the anointing there and get up and clean yourself and be tired and sleep and wake up and drag yourself brothers and sisters you have programmed something in the spirit you will get up in the morning and just dress and say father thank you and get a phone call who is this i'm seeing a document that has been here four years on my table who are you so i finished for what did you read anyway it's not what you read where are you come quickly i like you ha. you just know that praise is working praise is working let the people praise me psalm 67 verse 5 to 7 let the people praise me it's an instruction the earth has been programmed to deliver certain results but let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee verse 6 then shall the earth yield her increase and god even our god shall bless us you can stop there zephaniah it may be difficult for some of us to find but just write media please give it to us zephaniah chapter 3 let's read 14 to 20 i hope we can just quickly hurry up zephaniah chapter 3 zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 14 we're reading to verse 20 listen it says sing O daughter of zion it's not talking about a lady it's talking about human beings you must read the bible prophetically when he says daughter find out what he means there are times in the bible all people are sons there are times all people are daughters are we together so don't think he's talking to ladies sing O daughter of zion shout O israel be glad and rejoice with all the heart O daughter of jerusalem we're reading to verse 20 the lord had taken away thy judgments and has cast out thine enemy the king of israel even the lord is in the midst of thee thou shalt not see evil anymore 
in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem fear thou not and to Zion let not thy hands be slack we are reading to verse 20 give us 17 the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty he will save he will rejoice over thee with joy he will rest in his love he will joy over thee with what singing singing I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden verse 19 behold at that time I will undo all that afflict thee and I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame hmm. at that time I will bring you again even in the time that I will gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes say the Lord you read that scripture and say Lord whether you understand it or not I am dancing with this revelation that you are turning something I can see everything hey, hey. For, do you see everything I can see everything one more time can see everything turning around please sit down when you go back home continue 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 apostle I don't have a house find a tree find somewhere it is a place that will give you a house my brother I'm staying with neighbors I don't want to disturb them find somewhere behind one rock you don't have to shout and disturb the neighborhood just engage in praise glorify God you may be tired but it's called a sacrifice of praise brothers and sisters do this and see how things will turn in your life there's nothing the devil can do with someone who is full of joy and glory this gloominess that you see people tie their face around it doesn't bring breakthrough it adds to your sorrow you loosen up and say father you are faithful you are tying your face around and people say why are you why should i not tie my face and will you pay my rent for me my brother is praise that will pay that rent so you turn everything and rejoice let me tell you what many people will say who see you engaging this <laughs> because they don't mind all these men of god they are turning you people to be stupid you see that but when you meet them for rent they won't give you if you want god's results follow his methods number three quickly the third key to activating the mystery of divine intervention is called seed faith say after me seed faith listen i know that giving has been abused listen carefully please outside online listen carefully i know that giving has largely been abused because it has looked like some manipulation and journalists and bloggers have not done justice because they have mixed everything and made it look like giving and sacrifice is some gimmicks to corner money and give a man of god brothers and sisters let me tell you something something i do all the time including today every time you are in a situation listen please every time you are in a situation that only god can step in with understanding haven't prayed package a seed speak to that seed and give it an instruction and sow that seed release if you just sow money is bribery it's not the money revelation the bible is full of the potent power of seed faith connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke god's hand for intervention i've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry i've done it countless times on behalf of myself my family my friends people i love seeds the seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it 
please listen to me don't think i'm asking you to give me money no there are people who when they hear this they just frown their face not at all not at all god has been faithful to me are we together listen there are people who have turned their lives around overnight if there is one thing i know in my little walk with god is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent i promise you i have seen people quarter to shame everything was against them it was obvious they are finished and they used their seed and turned the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine my life is full of sacrifices psalm 126 don't turn there verse 1 to 6 you write it that when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream the first six verses the la the sixth verse ends by saying they that sow in tears the whole verses are connected verse six is connected to verse one god turning away the captivity of zion like a dream he says that they that sow in tears will reap in joy he that weepeth bearing precious seeds the bible says shall doubtless return rejoicing bringing in the sheep. it's not every seed to be cheerful does not mean to laugh to be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart there are some times you will cry for the seeds you sow hallelujah someone came over to my place today and the lord instructed him to bring me a seed and quite a very serious seed just you know a military officer just came dropped the seed and when i saw it the seed was in dollars I said wow in this recession this seed and the lord told me no 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 make sure you don't touch it this is your seed for something and the lord told me i started dancing i said thank you jesus this is it when god gives you seed to sow is intervention of getting the seed to sow is an act of god's mercy that you say lord i must provoke this but i have no seed then he gives seed to the sower those who know only know how to eat anything plus their destiny they keep getting bread but those who want to create a future brothers and sisters i have created realities in my life with seeds i believe in the power of a seed listen don't let people because of their cynicism the imbalance when a man creates an imbalance in scripture you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused you bring it to context and teach people brothers and sisters a seed can change your life believe me i have done crazy things in my life i thank god that is only god that reveals that that is only god that knows the heart of men there are things if i tell you that i have done with seeds some of you you are not related to me but you will be angry you will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession seeds there was a year i've shared it again and again that god gave us an instruction we were just resuming koinonia and god gave an instruction he said so everything 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 i don't mean small so everything let it go i said thank you jesus you are ready to lift us that is revelation by faith abel offered you offer by faith you don't offer by by tricks and all kinds of no 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 and we release it brothers and sisters it didn't reach seven days seven days more than 10 times that amount came seeds i'm not saying you should give carelessly no but brothers and sisters the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years nobody is moving forward in your family you are just sitting down and god is saying look you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice one day you get angry and say lord i am tired of this anna did not have money to give but she said lord let's do it 
give me the child. I've given the child already as a seed. And God said, it's a done deal. There was a king in the Bible who they wanted to slaughter and defeat. It was very clear the nation of Israel would defeat them. And he carried his son, his future, and slew the child. The Bible says, and indignation rose up to heaven. Battle ended. When God wanted to redeem man, it was an issue of urgency. God carried Jesus, the lamb upon the throne, slew him. Jesus cried and God said, that's not the issue. Man must be saved. This greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us. Get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future. Get used to it. You may not have a seed. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there are many ways to give. Money is not the only seed. It's just the seed that can easily be exchanged. That's why. There are times that people have made radical sacrifices. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Principles of divine intervention. Trace your life. At the moment where God gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes and watch what happened you just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going mm. I hardly share my testimonies I stopped because I found out that it annoys a lot of people and I'm not ready to attract unnecessary um, you know, people, once they hear preachers talk, there are people who just get angry, just like that. It's nonsense. Brothers and sisters, learn to sow seeds. But the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions. This is the mistake many of us have been making. You package a seed. Some of you come and join the line. Apostle, here is a seed I'm sowing. I always ask people, what is this for? And the people say, for nothing, just I just feel like seeing you. That's a donation. That's a donation, brothers and sisters. All seeds are not the same. There is a seed you give to the poor. There is something it does to you. There is a seed that you give to widows and orphans. There is a kind of result. There is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are. If the word of God were a lie, I would have died since. Because the risk I've taken with this word, it would have killed me since. But I believe him. I believe him. When I saw that seed today, I was happy. The joy that filled my heart. I await the testimony that comes from it. Wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled through sowing is a waste of time. It's, imagine now, somebody who didn't go to the farm. He has a land somewhere. He just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck and it goes to an empty place you will find weed there but whoever sowed january february down to april is smiling right now because he knows it's harvest time brothers and sisters i pray for us may god kill greed from our life this attachment to money listen this many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money it's a lie wealthy people in the kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it your seed is an instrument that creates your future. Hallelujah. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. I'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text. He sowed a seed. I remember it was when he sent me the text. Truly speaking, I remember. They sowed seeds and I was opening the envelopes. Most times it takes, it honestly takes a while, maybe some days before I even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it. And I opened the envelope and I saw five naira and a letter. The guy said this five naira was his Isaac. I know you will laugh and say, hey, this stupid boy, no. I respected that because that, that thing I knew will create a harvest. And the guy, I opened it and wrote some things like that. And then I just felt led to pray for him. Do you know it didn't reach two weeks? The guy sent me a text and said, I have never in my life seen favor like this. 
five naira it's not about the money it's about the heart somebody was tired of where how many jobless people have not shown anything and they keep moving around with cv what must tell you the devil is fighting you you carry a seed and say god please i'm married with three children no job this mockery must end i drop this and tie it to my job and then praise around that seed praise around the seed and your brothers and sisters say so this is what they are teaching you this is how these stupid men of god keep eating your money and all of a sudden the heaven opens breakthrough upon breakthrough you are praying to buy land oh lord please give me two million naira to buy land i now have one hundred and fifty thousand. just top it up for me and god says you mustn't buy it just learn let me show you and all of a sudden someone stands up and blesses you i think it was you Jimmy. i was showing you was it yesterday i was showing him the documents of a property that was given to me recently i said god what is this what is this for as long as you sow whether you like it or not the law is that you must reap so if you have not sown anything stop stop saying god where is my harvest and he said what what are you saying a woman who does not take in is she expecting a child no sir no sir schedule seasons of breakthrough in your life your seed is a weapon not just your prayer your seed is a weapon your seed is a weapon one mama called me one time i was led by god honestly i felt so i didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman and she was praying for divine financial intervention i said mama please i want you to sow a seed not to me i i, I would never have the effort tree to tell that woman to sow into my life i'm sure that woman will be older than my mother i said please try connect with a seed and the woman said she doesn't have anything i say it's not true mama there is something you have what do you do she says she farms yam I say carry four or five tubers of yam. Find any church. I said, which church is close around your area? She said, there's living faith. I said, go there. Find four tubers of yam. Tie it and be praying, singing any song in your language you know, while you march to the pastor's, um, uh, what do you call it? The pastor's office. Whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business. Only a stupid man of God resents the seed of a desperate believer. It's not whether you are more than 50% of the things people sow into my life, I don't need it. It's not for me. I recognize what it is. Is God speaking to someone? Seed faith. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. In first king 17 when our time is gone just write it we don't have to project it first king 17 from verse 7 to 6 from verse 7 to 16 first kings chapter 17 when you read from verse 7 to verse 16 the bible talks there about brook cherith when it dried during the famine and the bible says that the lord told elijah to go to a place called zarephath and he said there was a widow there God wanted to intervene in that widow's life. When the prophet got there, he said, give me water. She was running to go and bring water. And he said, please, and make some bread for me. And the woman said, I'm sorry, man of God. I respect you, but honestly, this is the last one I'm about to eat with my son so that we'll just wait until we die. And the prophet said, no, no. When you give, it does not end. When you give, you extend the life of whatever it is. The prophet was teaching her. He said, make it for me first. In our generation, they say that's a heartless and wicked, devilish prophet. But the moment she did that, the Bible says she lived off what was there until the famine was over. You can change your life. November, December is too short a time. No. November, December is too short a time, brothers and sisters. God can step into your life and do something in your life that you cannot imagine. Don't be surprised that you'll be celebrating New Year in your own house. Whereas right now you don't even have land. I'm talking to believers. 
don't be surprised that you can give away up to five ten million by december whereas what you have in your account now is not up to ten thousand listen i'm not talking nonsense i'm not stupid don't be surprised that after 10 20 years that your wife has been buried that she's going to celebrate new year two months pregnant you do every calculation you know it's not up to two months but she's two months pregnant don't ask where the child came from that right now you are not even sure where your certificate is because you are tired you have thrown it somewhere but don't be surprised that you will be managing a business by the end of this year is it not god we are talking about is it not the god of heaven we are talking about number four the fourth key is the power of prophecy the power of the prophetic weapons of supernatural intervention the power of prophecy second kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 8 we've already discussed it just write it down second kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 8 the story of elisha in samaria and the abundance that came to an entire land because there was a divine intervention by prophecy hosea chapter 12 from verse 13 please give it to us the bible says and by a prophet listen carefully and by a prophet he says the lord brought israel out of egypt how did they come out of egypt by a prophet not by god you would think god will say oh by me yes it is by god but the instrument that he used was a prophet and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet was he preserved listen there are challenges that people go through in life that is totally needless if only they can locate a genuinely anointed prophet of god you can come out of a situation overnight some battles are totally needless they are products of pride and ignorance take note of these things i'm saying pride and ignorance some battles are totally needless there is enough grace and anointing to bail people out of it a gentleman had been writing i think it was wayek or neko i can't remember for over maybe six seven years i remember one time he came and he was crying i didn't allow him to finish i said that's all right let me pray for you it is done and he just went and the guy testified that truly speaking he answered nonsense in the exam because his brain had, he had stretched the thing he has passed the age that he should be concentrating to be reading for work and yet it came out he had all credits like that and he said truly this is my result i say of course it's not your result god gave you to help you move forward of course it's not your result when other people are celebrating their intelligence you go to god and say thank you this one you gave me there are things when other people are saying i got you turn to god and say this one came from you prophetic intervention brothers and sisters god still has anointed men no? yes an anointed man is not a man who speaks well an anointed man is not a man who throws people under the anointing there are people who are privileged by the election of grace that god has put ancient ancient possibilities within them for the sake of the body your own price is to believe they may not look like it but they carry it what you have you have it was given to you are we together i truly believe that someone tonight i told us the remaining services for this year will be very strongly prophetic services and it will start from tonight just the five minutes or so we have to pray and then i speak over your life when prophecy comes receive it receive it you can reject it but you can receive it do you know i listen to every koinonia message this message now that is being preached it's not joshua selman this is the man of god teaching 
Joshua Selman will listen to the man of God later in the week. And when it's time to prophesy, I will lift my hands and receive and pray in tongues. Otherwise, I will keep blessing and the anointing that came from the throne through me. Through me. I must also receive it by faith. Prayer point number one. Father, I am tired of where I am. I am tired. You are a changer of people's lives. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I am tired of where I am, truly speaking. Lord, this year will not end like this. I've not yet seen any notable testimony in my life. And the year is about to end. Oh, God of heaven, arise, arise. Those online pray. Lord, the favor you said I will walk in, I am yet to see it manifest, and it is November. The prosperity that you said I will walk in, Lord, I believe you, I still believe you. So desperate people we want more, more Lord lift your voice and pray we are desperate people we want more, more Lord. we are desperate people we want more, more Lord. we are desperate people Tired of the status quo It's gotta be more than this It's gotta be more, gotta be more Gotta be more than this For desperate people do desperate things And we press in Gotta be more after me in the name of Jesus shout it say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare over every mountain that stands between me and my result hear the word of the Lord be crushed into pieces lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus, hear the word of the Lord. I speak over every mountain, mountain of witchcraft, mountain of delay. I crush you by the God of heaven. Those outside pray, online pray. I decree and declare. Hear the word of the Lord. Who are down mountain before Joshua Selman? I command you become play. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every promise hanging in the realm of the spirit I prophesy by the mystery of divine intercession you must manifest now lift your voice and pray find expression I give you a body my breakthrough find expression 
my lifting find expression my advancement find expression i give you a body manifest in my life pray find expression I've seen you in my dreams. I've seen you in my visions. I command you to manifest. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Everything I've lost, say it again in the name of Jesus. Everything that should not have left me, but was taken away from me, I decree and declare, return back to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious, be serious, pray. Every relationship that should not have left, every finance that should not have left, Every favor, every breakthrough, I call you back. Every access, every platform, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Please lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit of God, I push you to the next level of your life. I push you to the next level of your life. And hear me, I decree. I don't know what stands your way. I come tonight in the name of Jesus and I crush it into pieces. The same way the Red Sea was divided, I command every obstacle to be divided in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Every physical scenario that must be created in the earth realm to force what is in the spirit to find expression, I schedule that event now in the name of Jesus. Hear me, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, what has tied you and limited you. That's how you thought breakthrough would come last year. It didn't come. I declare to you in these two months left, enter your rest. Enter your rest. Enter your rest. Enter your rest. Lift your hands. I want to prophesy over your finances. There is, there is the power to prosper. Listen, there is a grace that helps men prosper. In the name of Jesus, believe me as I pray this prayer for you. By the grace of God who has shown me mercy and grace, I prophesy to you, beginning from this night, favor after favor, strange financial favor. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your destiny. I speak it to your life. In the name of Jesus. Any man sitting on your glory. Shakotos Katabatea. In the name of Jesus. I declare the earth opens up tonight and swallows them. The spirit that eats up blessings when it's almost coming to you. It comes to others when it's about your turn. Something cuts you off. This is not for everybody. But I'm prophesying to someone. If your eyes saw it in the spirit, I command your hands to hold it. If you saw it in your dream, I command your hand to hold it. If you saw it in your visions, I command your hand to hold it.
Hallelujah. Now listen. I pray for everyone here who is a student. That, and you are not you have already celebrated graduation. But the truth of the matter is that what is in the faculty will not graduate you. I stand before my God whom I serve and I decree and declare strange intervention for you now. Listen, if there is anyone here, God told you that by December you should have a job. Until now, no job has entered your hands. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, wherever your job is, from the realm of the spirit, I connect it to your life. I connect it to your life. And if there is anyone sitting there now, I overturn, I overturn until it gets to your turn. Listen, there are people God has instructed to bless you, but they have been disobedient. I take sleep on them tonight. They must obey God on your behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please hear me. I don't know what has not been working in your life. I'm prophesying to you by the anointing. I decree and declare. They say, Master, we have toiled all night. Some of you, you have toiled from January. You have submitted the same prayer request. Miracle service after miracle service. It comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus, it comes to an end now. By the anointing of the Spirit. Give me one minute to speak over your family members. I don't know what is plaguing your family members that God must step in. If not, you will still cry again. I change that situation now. Please help them, help them. I change that situation now. May the angel of the Lord's presence in the name of Jesus go to every home and begin to correct things now. I command correction 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 if there is anyone here with a health challenge that has refused to go i don't care what it is i stretch my hands to you and i command that the power of god comes upon your body now and let that sickness go i terminate that infirmity whether it's a blood disease whether it's witchcraft, barrenness, whatever it is, I terminate it now. Listen, please believe me. Whatever you have seen in your dreams and visions that you know it is of God, I release my faith to you. I pull it to your destiny. Don't be foolish and say, how will it happen? No, we are talking of the God of heaven. The anointing for divine intervention. This is the anointing that will be functioning all through this week. I decree. Thank God it is Sunday. I'm sure that's why God made it Sunday. I prophesy. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday until Friday. I command them days of divine intervention. Days of divine intervention. I speak it to the realm of the spirit. Angels of intervention. Moments of intervention. The last prayer and we are done. In the name of Jesus. Every mal man that your favor is tied to. Shakotos katabarakata. Between now and Friday. I connect you to them all kinds of favor believe it I decree and declare if that man is alive on earth then between now and Friday let there be a strange connection wave your hands to Jesus and tell him thank you thank you Lord we give you praise we give you praise